And here's a narrow 146 megahertz sweep of the Coker effect one time. This goes from 144 megahertz to 148 megahertz. So you have a 4 megahertz bandwidth here. And you can see that it is well below 1 to 1.2 SWR. And here is a narrow 415 megahertz sweep. And again, it's below 1 to 1.2. And this is a 10 megahertz bandwidth. For the co-curve fractal antenna, I was fortunate enough to obtain real-life measurements for the return loss of the co-curve fractal antenna. And you can see that it's very, very similar to what the simulator results predicted. I have the two dips in the graph, and the major differences are that I have the extra dip towards the left, and that there's also a slight frequency shift. In the physical construction of my Coker fractal antenna, I have a plastic substrate that acts like a dielectric. And in the simulator, I don't account for that dielectric. So that could be the cause of the frequency shift. The next fractal antenna I chose to focus on was the single Hilbert curve fractal antenna. And the results of this antenna indicated that it was just as interesting and unique as the Coker fractal antenna. Here is a picture of its physical construction. And the dimensions of this antenna are one and a half by one and a half feet. As for the 3D radiation pattern, you can see that the field strength is evenly dispersed around the antenna. And this type of radiation pattern is favorable in omnidirectional applications. And here's the azimuth pattern. Now for the simulated spectrum sweep, the results indicate that it had a stunning SWR at 146 megahertz, virtually a one-to-one -one match. But this, the results also indicated that it was tuned for yet another amateur radio band. And this time it's 222 megahertz with a 1 to 2.4 SWR. And here is a narrow 146 megahertz sweep. So there is less bandwidth here. You can see that there's uh, the, pat the pattern is a little more steep. And here is the narrow 222 megahertz speed. So the simulated results and the real life results looked very good, but I wanted to be sure that they were accurate. So after physically constructing both models, I talked to a local ham in my area, and the report was that both of these antennas worked very well. In fact, the Hilbert curve fractal antenna worked a little better, but that can be expected based on the stunning SWR that it had. And I also performed a primitive field strength test, and the field, simulated field strength pattern was very similar to what the real life pattern provided. So the program I wrote was merely a starting point. But it goes to show how simple designing fractal antennas really can be. The program allows you to model and optimize fractal antennas more intelligently rather than contending with the strenuous method of trial and error. So instead of constructing one fractal antenna and then constructing more fractal antennas to improve upon the former design or experiment, the program allows you to quickly generate conceivable fractal antennas for your application in a theoretical basis, but one that is reliable. So as a result, you can rapidly generate different fractal antennas for your application, reducing the cost of research and development by a large margin. There are many improvements I would like to make to both my program and the fractal antennas I constructed in the future. For the program, I would like to add a wider range of supported fractal antennas think about the thousands of possibilities, this might be difficult. But ideally, what I would want is to have a class in the program I wrote so that the user can provide the basic parameters of their fractal, such as the initiator, the generator, and the specific angle measures, so that the program can immediately render any type of fractal design or pattern that you want. I'd also like for the program to give a perimeter length estimation, provided a frequency value. 
and offer Gerber file support so that once you're satisfied with the simulated results of your fractal antenna, you can prepare it for a PCB. And finally, have a user-friendly graphical user interface so that everyone can confer more easily with the technical aspects of this program. As for future experimentation, for the co-curve fractal antenna, I would like to make the antenna not only resonant on the 2 meter amateur radio band, but also the 70 centimeter amateur radio band as well. It would also be interesting to study the effects of different dielectric materials and use a larger diameter wire in several experiments to presumably increase the bandwidth of a given fractal. And finally, provide thorough real-life measurements so that you can depend fully on the simulated results of the program and Fortnite 2 and not have to use expensive equipment to confirm their accuracy. So in conclusion, I've shown that fractal antennas really do have a unique future in RF technology. I've shown that they can be designed practically and efficiently that they are suitable for VHF and UAF, UHF applications, and that they exhibit an ease of manufacturing. And I intend to continue my research and experimenting with fractal antennas so that I may contribute to its growing interest. I would like to thank the Radio Club of America and Carol wb 2 ngp for providing the opportunity of giving this presentation. I would also like to thank Jerry and Zero UI for his advice and suggestions on my presentation. And also my family and Mark Jr. for their encouragement and support. Thank you. is for being the first young person that we've had and what I hope will be you as an inspiration for many, many more in the years to come. And for all your achievements in radio science, we would love to present you with this very, very beautiful award from the Radio Club of America.
I, my grandfather, he helped me out a lot. He actually sparked my interest in a lot of times. But I, I developed a fascination for programming uh, when I was, I think, 14 years old, 14 or 15. And most of that was self-taught. And this was my first Python uh, programming language project. So I thought it would be fun to learn it. But I have had a lot of help from Bart Jr., which is my older and radio club for juniors uh, radio group, and they have a lot of Elmer's and such. So I have had a lot of support, but I have been self-taught <laughs> for some things. Yes. All right, so let me ask a question. Um, but let's go back to when you first got into this, when you first started um, becoming interested in this field. Um, how old were you, and, and what sparked your interest? I was about 10 years old, and I think my family noticed it first before I did because all the flashlights in the house were taken apart. And, you know, we would have the electricity go out, no one could find a flashlight. So, uh, but my grandfather, he really helped me develop that interest and make it into something more than what I ever expected. So, yes. As you visualize the uh, commercial application of these from consumer to military to whatever, uh, what do you envision are the possible extremes in terms of how small an antenna for what man, how large an antenna for what man? I, I think that really depends on the pattern. Uh, you saw with the Coke curve fractal antenna, there was a lot of space that could have been filled. And compared to the Hilbert curve fractal antenna, you can really see that I, I consume all of that space. So, and that's one of the things I mentioned was the optimized design, in which if you're given a unique structure, you can use a fractal pattern to make the most of that space and make it very compact. And I've, I've noticed with the results that I have, almost always the fractal antennas the total perimeter length was less than what the wavelength was required. So with the co-curve fractal antenna, it was four feet compared to 6.56 feet. So you can see that there was a reduction in perimeter length. But I think that, you know, there's many, many applications and we're actually seeing more such as fractal filters now and other types of applications. Is there, is there a predictability to the resonance? So you said that you've got some positive resonance. Is there a predictability in the program that shows you, or is it just what it turns out? With the program, I started out with just running, rendering different types of antennas. And at the, at the present moment, I do not have the program uh, predict you know, where the resonant points are. And again, that's, that depends on the pattern. You saw the code curve, that would, it was a little more spaced out compared to the Hilbert curve. But in the future, it would be very nice if you could provide certain frequency values and then have the program crunch through a bunch of different patterns and find the best design. 